Uh, I'm going to invite our third speaker, Nina. Thank you. I'm going to quickly share my screen. It's just a little bit about myself. I'm Meena. I work as an agile coach in a startup called Air. We work in the financial inclusion space. And uh, I recently gave the same talk that I'm about to give now to all of you uh, at the Launching New Voices program in uh, Women in Agile Europe. I was one of the protégés this, this year and I had a great experience presenting there. So when Bianca posted on the uh, Slack channel there asking for lightning talks, I asked her, hey, can I give the same talk? Would it be okay? And she was like, yeah, that's fine. So I submitted the proposal and uh, just want to say thank you for having me. And uh, I'm going to share a few things that I've learned along the way, working in a startup for over two years now. And I hope it's useful to you. So let's begin. <clears throat> I'm going to start by asking you all a question. When I say the word startup, what exactly springs to mind? So for some of you, it might be visions of a founder starting something up in a garage that then went on to become something wonderful. For others, it might trigger words like idea or innovation. And for yet others, it's something intangible, something you can't quite define that a Harvard Business Review article referred to as the soul of a startup. But my favorite definition is the one that I found in Eric Ries's excellent book, The Lean Startup, where he talks about it as an institution designed to create a new product or service under conditions of extreme uncertainty. So there are a couple of things here. One, a startup might be trying to find what is known as product market fit. That is, they've got a market that they know they want to operate in. And then they've got a product that they think satisfies a customer need in that market, but they're still testing that hypothesis. A quick Google search will tell you that a staggering 90% of all startups fail within the first year of operation. So I'm just gonna let those figures sink in. The second thing is that startups are usually small. They consist of a small, highly interconnected group of people working on some common purpose. So if we bring both these two things together, this is the perfect storm, right? This is, this, is what, this is where the Agile Manifesto and the 12 Agile Principles can actually help, but how? So startups have a golden opportunity and the opportunity they have is to get the building blocks of their culture right. A culture that's psychologically safe, that is all, value, all voices are valued and heard, even the voices that say, hey, I don't think that's going to work. This is extremely important in a startup. This in turn enables an experimental mindset where everything is treated as an experiment. Your processes, tools, your ways of working and your product itself. So you learn from experiments, you get feedback and then you move on. So I'm going to tell you all a personal story to show both of these aspects of culture in action. I've got two little boys, Vivi age three and Nick age seven. And uh, we had dinner one day and we settled down for an evening of board games. We picked the one that you see on your screen now. You can see, you can tell from the box what this game is about. And you can also see that laid out there very neatly is a solution. What we don't like is agilist, right? But yeah, it's right there. But experienced parents know that little children often ask the magic question, why? So my little boy said, mommy, why do the birdies have to sit on the tree? I was put on the spot. So I just made something up. I said, hey, you know, it's really dark outside and there are foxes about. They need to be safe. He was happy with that. And I sort of faded into the background and I watched as magic unfolded before my eyes. So based on that one cue that I gave my kids, they started building out the solution. They put the little beam up. And what I noticed was that they were always focused on the birds. So they were iterating very quickly, but they were placing the birds, they were integrating frequently, and very quickly they came up with a little working solution. And you can see the results of iteration one here. You can see that they've got there in less number of steps than what's in the box because there are beams lying on the floor, right? 
you can also see that my little boy is sticking his tongue out. So he's having a lot of fun. And it's something that little children do when they're in a state of flow. He's keenly enjoying himself. But then disaster struck. One of them picked up a bird from the tree and unbalanced, the whole thing came crashing down. Bang. Failure. Feedback. But the way they responded was amazing. They were very emotional about it, but they started talking to each other and they said, hey, that's not fair. It's not fair that if one bird loses its home, all of the other birds should lose their home. And they started working on iteration too. And this is what they came up with. You can see each bird has its own little tree there. So this kind of creative problem solving is only possible. It was only possible because they were psychologically safe and they'd clearly embraced an experimental mindset. So now going back to startups, once startups get their culture right, what next? So organizational leaders tend to focus on impacts, which are measurable changes in business results. That is, it could be a change in revenue. This is too high level for an agile cross-functional team to work on. And then you've got your outputs. These are things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. They could be experiments you run, or features you build, or services, or interfaces, or anything you do that you create. But the problem with outputs are they don't necessarily generate value. But what if we, as agilists, were to coach teams to instead focus on outcomes? And the particular definition of outcomes that I found useful was to think of them in terms of changes in human behavior that help drive business results. This is from Joshua Seiden's book, Outcomes Over Output. I had a team that had a tangible outcome in the form of engineers should be able to release their code at the end of every sprint. And armed with that, they thought through a lot of uh, different aspects of usability, which they otherwise wouldn't have if they had just focused on the processes and tools. I'm going to leave you with that thought. And uh, just wanted to say, don't lose sight of your outcomes, just as my kids didn't lose sight of what they wanted to do for their little birds. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. That was really inspiring. I love that game. I think it, it, it's a nice game to play even for us. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is it's very engrossing. And having fun is also like definitely part of the solution. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and